The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable communications industry and your local cable company. All right, I know, you're probably thinking, what's he doing here? Brandon's always out on the road, sailing around Key West, traveling around California, checking out Hawaii. Well, considering that I always seem to get all the fun assignments, I thought maybe I should stay home for at least one show and let everybody else have some fun. So I told the gang about it, and they thought it was a great idea. And then I told them which show that I'd pick to be here, inside, safe and sound, while they're there, outside, running around. Suddenly, they weren't so happy anymore. But no matter. Welcome to the show. And you might want to hold on to something sturdy because it's time for Mother Nature at her meanest. You see, today at the Weather Classroom, it's hurricane. They're one of the most powerful forces on Earth. And every year, they begin brewing in the warm tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. A lot of them fizzle out into nothing, but some of them make their way to land and smash into coastlines full of people. That's when it gets really dangerous, but we'll get to that in good time. For right now, let's hook up with Jocelyn, who's hanging out in hurricane country, to get the lowdown on just what it takes to make one of these monsters. And most importantly, who names these things? Hard to believe on a day like today that this is Storm Central, but trust me, this place has seen more than its fair share of serious weather, and it's the perfect spot to talk about hurricanes. We're in the subtropics, South Florida to be exact, and in 1992, one of the most famous storms of all time blew through here, Hurricane Andrew. It rammed into the coast and ripped across the state, causing $26 billion in damage making it the most expensive natural disaster ever to strike the United States. You know, amazingly, for all you hear about them, most people don't ever really understand just what makes a hurricane, well, a hurricane. So let's start at the very beginning, out there, where the great storms are born. It all starts with cyclones. A cyclone is a low pressure area in the atmosphere in which the winds spiral inward. They come in all sizes and happen all over the world. Cyclones spin counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere because of the Coriolis effect. In the United States, we see a lot of really small but incredibly intense cyclones called tornadoes. Another type of cyclone forms over warm, tropical waters in the world's oceans, and we call these storms, you got it, tropical cyclones. When tropical cyclones form in the Western Pacific, people call them typhoons. In the Indian Ocean, they call the same storm a cyclone. And when they form in the Northern Atlantic or Eastern Pacific, we just call them, drum roll please, hurricanes. So now that you know your cyclones from your typhoons, we need to see exactly how they happen. Hurricanes don't just happen every day, and there are some very specific ingredients that go into making one. So we hooked up with our own master chef, Jason, who's gonna show us how Mother Nature cooks up the perfect storm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, have we got a special treat for you. When you need a dish that'll really blow your dinner guest away, there's nothing quite like a good hurricane. And joining us today is one of the world's leading experts on these storms. From the Weather Channel, Dr. Steve Lyons. Give it up for Steve. All right, all right. So, Steve, you're telling me we can cook up a hurricane right here in my kitchen? Absolutely, Jason. <laughs> okay, dude. Let's get to it. Uh, what's up first? Seawater, lots of seawater. And it needs to be heated to a temperature of at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It has to be 80 degrees or hotter. Mostly. Hurricanes thrive on heat. They're all about heat. You take it away and they weaken or fall apart. That's why you find hurricanes forming only in the tropics or subtropics in the summertime, where the water temperature is at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius. Okay. Well, we've got hot water. What's the next ingredient? Low pressure. 
There are many different causes for low pressure, but in the tropics, our most common one is the tropical wave. It's an elongated low pressure area that tends to move from east to west across the tropical Atlantic. Okay, we've got hot water and low pressure. What happens then? Well, in these low pressure areas, the air tends to converge near the low pressure and rise, forming thunderstorms. And those thunderstorms are the fuel for the hurricane. It sounds like we're off to a good start. We've got hot water, we've got a low pressure area, and now we have thunderstorms. But what happens next? Mix these three ingredients together, and now we're really cooking. Check this out. Imagine this lamp is the sun heating the ocean surface. It evaporates water off the ocean surface, and that energy in the process moves into the atmosphere and fuels the hurricane. OK, we're really cooking up a storm. What's next? Wind. Where does wind come from? Well, while all this heating and evaporation is going on, there's another process going on. That's rotation. The Earth is rotating on its axis. But remember, we have low pressure as well. So the net effect is to have wind blow around low pressure due to the rotation of the Earth. And that's where we get the spiraling winds in a hurricane. Instant wind. Bingo. OK, we're turning water into hot water vapor. The wind is going around in a circle. But now what? Now the eye forms. The eye? The clear area near the circulation center. We call that the eye of the hurricane. <laughs> I'll bet you get blown to bits in there. Actually, just the opposite. A few puffy clouds in there. And normally the winds are light and variable or just a very light breeze. The eye is formed when the air aloft, very high in the atmosphere, sinks in a narrow column almost to the sea surface. As it sinks, it clears out all the clouds. In the meantime, on the outside of the hurricane, all those thunderstorms are still rising. That water vapor is con condensing into cloud, and that heat is being released. It lowers the surface pressure. As that surface pressure lowers, the air starts to flow into the low pressure even more, sort of like this. Oh, it just sucks in more moisture, just like that. Exactly, except in a hurricane, the upward motion is on the outside of the straw rather than on the inside. Very cool. So is it soup yet? Yep, that's it. Well, let's show the folks at home the finished product. Wow. Now that's a recipe for disaster. I'm thinking next time we'll stick to some nice, safe pasta. Probably best. The Weather Classroom will be right back. Trust me.